communities are being bullied just like we are. What they need is cash. Yeah, because the miners have always come to our aid. It doesn't they? matter. It's the right thing to do. The hit British film Pride tells the true story of how a small group of lesbians and gay men in London supported a striking South Wales mining community and in doing so changed the course of history for gay men and women. But behind this feel-good film is a wider story of traditional communities being wiped out, the destruction of a thriving industry and the loss of almost 200,000 jobs. With the final few mines in the UK now set to close, Museums like this are all that will be left to remind us of the importance of an industry the striking miners and their families were fighting to save. God, that's amazing. Mike Jackson, an Usdor and LGBT activist, was involved in the strike and he helped forge an unlikely alliance between the miners and the LGBT community. This previously little known story is now an international hit film. The thing is, is that I'm actually from Bromley. Well, don't worry about that, we're a broad church. With Mike as one of the central characters. What people would find hard to understand now if they were too young to have known the miners' strike was quite how it divided Britain. It was enormous. The 1984 miners' strike pitted Margaret Thatcher's Tory government against the National Union of Mine Workers, led by Arthur Scargill in what many saw as a defining battle between the left and right in British politics. Thatcher had been in power for five years by now and she'd been attacking working class communities and working class values and working class institutions right since 1979. And I think an awful lot of us realised this was not about coal. It wasn't about coal mining, it wasn't about economics. This was an assault on trade unionism itself. Margaret Thatcher's government had been preparing for the strike for several years by stockpiling large reserves of coal. And when the strike came, she did all she could to undermine the resolve of the miners. One of the things that Thatcher did was that she froze the assets of the NUM. So get that, you're a trade unionist, you've been paying into a strike fund, thousands of you, for years and years and years, so that you went and you go on strike, you can get a little bit of money from the union. She just marauded into their bank funds and said, no, we're seizing that, you can't have it. So she was clearly trying to starve the miners back to work. They had nothing. By defeating the National Union of Mine Workers, Margaret Thatcher knew she would significantly reduce the power of the whole trade union movement. She called on the press, the media, the police, and by some accounts, even the army, to help her destroy those she branded the enemy within. The press were vilifying the miners, they, they vilified Arthur Scargill, uh, the BBC uh, switched footage round at the Orgreave um, dispute and what it made it look like was that the miners attacked the police, whereas in fact it was the opposite way around. We too were being vilified by the media and the press, uh, we too were being uh, attacked by the police. We felt like we had quite a lot in common with, with the miners. So Mike and his friend Mark Ashton set out to raise money for the striking miners at the Gay Pride March. I want everyone to take a bucket and start rattling. This is for the miners. Miners? We agreed on the banner march. It's a show of solidarity. Who hates the miners? Thatcher. Who else? The police, the public and the tabloid press. Others joined and they formed Lesbians and Gays Support the Miners. They decided to send the money they'd raised to a small mining community in Dulles, in the South Wales Valley. So as secretary, I wrote this letter, and I remember posting it and thinking, God, I'd love to be a fly on the wall when somebody at the other end opens that one. Do you know what I mean? There's a bunch of queers in London who wants to support, you know, what do you think about that? But of course, it would be naive, stupid, and just plain wrong to say that there weren't homophobes amongst the mining community. Of course there were. There were homophobes everywhere in, in government, in, as well as in mining communities. Who cares? And they took a democratic decision to treat us like they treated all the other supporters, to invite us down to their community. Die! Your gays have arrived! 27 young charity shop chic, old, you know, trendy Londoners, walk through that double swing door and initially there's a drop in the tenor of conversation and it was like, that's us. And then somebody started clapping 
and the whole two to three hundred people in that room started applauding us and I just felt I've come home I've been accepted this is where I came from metaphorically yeah and all I ever wanted was to be accepted and I've got that acceptance and I just thought I will never turn my back on you people and I can't tell you the, the strength that that gave us. So victory! Victory to the miners! News of LGSM quickly spread to other coal fields, and Mike was amazed at the reaction they got. Uh, what, one of the early things that the miners did was that they started voluntarily wearing our badges on their lapels. That was a bit like, oh, OK. So they would say, you know, because there was a great exchange of badges during the miners' strike, and they would say, can I have your badge? And so it was amazing to think that these miners were going on picket lines up against the police, up against the scabs. They were going to national demonstrations. They were doing flying picketing, wearing gay badges. And that was amazing that they got it. They realised that actually the, one of the greatest needs of lesbian and gay men was visibility. We didn't want money, they needed money. What we needed was solidarity, support and identity and comradeship. Yeah. Eventually, the relentless attacks by the government, police and the media broke the strike. And in March 1985, the miners narrowly voted to return to work. We were actually down in Wales when the National Union Mine Workers made the national decision to return to work and that was a terribly sad weekend and one of the miners stood up and just said well our fight is over now uh, but now it's our turn to support those who've supported us and he said none more so than the lesbians and gays but to find out you had a friend you never knew existed well that's the best feeling in the world the miners kept their promise and a delegation turned up to march with them at gay pride and later that year, the NUM and the entire trade union movement expressed their gratitude at the TUC in a way that would change the course of history. And in October 1985, lesbian and gay rights became adopted as a trade union issue in Britain. And from there, it moved abroad. The miners gift to us was to actually empower us. And I feel forever indebted to the trade union movement because of that. Gay rights was now a major political issue and Margaret Thatcher's government responded in 1988 by passing Clause 28, a law that sought to ban the promotion of homosexuality. But then, in 1997, Labour came to power and began to introduce a series of measures to remove unfair discrimination for the lesbian and gay community. Ordinary people working together in trade unions put pressure on politicians and helped to change society. And as a proud member of the trade union USDOR, Mike is in no doubt that unions still have a significant role to play in shaping our future. And I go to my annual delegates meeting at USDOR and it's fantastic the things that they discuss at the meeting. And that's because trade unions are intrinsically incredibly democratic organisations. I used to work with ex-offenders and I took a proposition to last year's ADM of USDOR and, and it won. And my little proposition got through, and that's because my members discussed it democratically. Some people were in it, some people were for it, and in the end they voted for it. And that will enable us to put a bit more pressure on the government to give ex-offenders a chance. You know, and I did that. <laughs> and anybody can do it, and, and that's fantastic, you know. Mike has first-hand experience of the effects of collective action, and is more convinced than ever of the power of trade unions to change people's lives. If you're angry, join a trade union. If you're lonely, join a trade union. If you want to have some good times, join a trade union. It's ordinary people that bring about real change in the world. And as long as you're sitting on your bum doing nothing, they love that, they love you for that. You just sit there and be ignorant and quiet, that's what we want. Yeah, what they don't want you to do is loud <laughs> and noisy and active. And it's great when you do, believe me. <laughs>